now we start um, this uh, session with a keynote um, from Professor Tamash Hosman uh, from the University of Dresden. And um, I uh, would like to uh, introduce him, uh, if I can. He has an extensive um, curriculum data. Uh, so I I hope I can introduce you properly and fairly. Uh, so Professor uh, Tamar Kosma uh, is at this very moment an emeritus professor at the University of Deputy. I practice saying this word in the Hungary. Um, and he is um, he worked for a long time at the Institute of the Education Studies in the same university and has degrees. Uh, that includes history, uh, Hungarian studies, sociology of education, comparative uh, educational studies, and educational studies in itself. So he is the founder of the Center for Higher Education Research at the same university. But his long and rich career started as an elementary school teacher um, some years ago. So he has. <laughs> Beside his home, so he was visiting professor in uh, different universities across the world, uh, mainly European ones like the Reading, uh, Reading University in the United Kingdom, Vilnius Pedagogic University, Humboldt University in Berlin, uh, and the University of Chicago, just to name uh, uh, a few. So um, his research interests uh, were mainly um, under the topic of tertiary education and regional development higher education reforms uh, and the Bologna process, always with an historical perspective uh, and a comparative approach and analysis. Um, his international activities mirror also uh, his interest in making change. Uh, so in the 80s, he belonged to the UNESCO Commission for the development project of the University of Qatar, one example. Long-term planning of education in rural areas of Bulgaria was another international and relevant activity. Always interested in learning more about other countries' educational systems. And a substantial part as well from uh, his research interests uh, are focusing on regional and national scope uh, in what concerns education and also in the Central and Eastern Europe educational systems. From this standpoint, more focus on regional level and a national level, his work is relevant both for uh, understanding educational challenges and changes from the inside, from a more regional and analytical perspective, and also to address global European educational issues and concerns. His interest in interconnecting knowledge and transformation and higher education and regional development is a transversal concern in his academic activities. Several publications are uh, showing his interests in uh, comparative education, regional development and educational policies. What is inspiring about his work? Um, I think that uh, I could be able to tell you a lot of things. Uh, I choose some, uh, I choose to highlight some aspects of his work that for me uh, are the most uh, ins inspiring. Uh, his interest in cross-border cooperation in what concerns education, emphasizing the benefits of this cross-border, his work on higher education in Romania, Hungary, cross-border cooperation is just an example of this. Um, to compare and to share are almost an ontological aspect of his academic career and enable us to still be able to think about an academic community and a collective knowledge if this is still possible. I would like to highlight as well his willing of, um, for the transformation together with the promotion of social uh, quality, but also a transformation in a close dialogue with cultural identity with history, with heritage, and with memories. 
so uh, aspects that are very much needed to rethink contemporary problems and issues that we are facing. And finally, finally I would like to highlight uh, his um, memberships in the different uh, international and national associations. I would start with the membership in IRA, the Hungarian Educational Research Association. Uh, but uh, his membership includes uh, the, his belonging to the Hungarian Political Science Association, Interna International Sociological Association, uh, Hungarian Pedagogical Association, um, and finally, just to remark that he was one of the founding members of uh, IRA, the European Educational Research Association. So um, I will give the floor to the professor and to. I just uh, watched the video as you well, and uh, I didn't realize this was me. Because I told I it was you. Okay, well, fact, as far as the facts are concerned, I'm sure it was. But uh, as you as we produce things, as you pronounce the names, especially the name of my university, the University of Debrecen, was wonderful. <laughs> and uh, thank you for coming for this afternoon. And uh, let me, since uh, my chair told me very strictly that I have 45 minutes, uh, not more and not less, probably not more. Uh, let me jump uh, right to the middle of this presentation. Uh, yeah. And start with the picture. This is uh, uh, together with, with this luggage and with this one. And, and, and keep the hands. It's fantastic. It's full of openness of uh, reaching a new world, uh, uh, facing uh, to a uh, future, to the future, uh, opening uh, the heaven, uh, being sure that uh, he would succeed and he could make a uh, of breakthrough. That's, that's something which reflects to me. Probably everybody knows that what is, what is this. This is the migration at the Hungarian border. Um, but, but I like I like this vision. I like this approach uh, to the to the uh, migration. But this is another one which is not so uh, optimistic. Transit zone had uh, already been uh, set up by the local authority of Lebes. During the first days, they were quite surprised, astonished, and blocked. They couldn't even realize what happened. Well, few days, it took few days to uh, set up a transition zone, and this, this is the transition zone. Uh, today, if you if you would walk to the, to the railway station east to Budapest, uh, you wouldn't see this anymore because uh, the policy or the attitude of the officials, I would even say the government, changed to a certain extent. They realized that they, they couldn't make a stop to the flow. But uh, a few days ago, this was the case. 
this uh, picture uh, is a kind of melodramatic uh, vision or, or approach to the whole idea. We are with the mother here, keeping this uh, uh, shelter to the uh, yeah, well, the younger is, is as usual is, uh, after, but, but the first one is under the shelter and waiting probably for nothing. Uh, at least they don't know what, uh, what will happen to them. And uh, how about this? Uh, with the face of this uh, girl on the, from the other side of the fences and how the priest um, in this armor. Well, practically they didn't hurt them, and this is uh, not a cry, rather a kind of curiosity. Still, with this fence and with this small, they feel touched. I think that is not that. And, uh, but this is the most serious thing. Uh, uh, probably three weeks ago they started to to, well, the, the, uh, the government and the police uh, started a step, uh, made a step further and wanted to, to make, uh, <coughs> make uh, a stop to the, to the flow. Uh, one thing uh, is not necessarily <coughs> clear to everybody, which is that uh, the Prime Minister, who is a forceful uh, figure, I mean, uh, the character is forceful also, uh, uh, was very successful of stopping the flood of the Danube this uh, spring. So somehow they might feel that they could do the same. This is one explanation. This is a friendly explanation. There can be different explanations also. Anyhow, here is uh, not an optimistic face. This is not a curious face. And he is not an optimistic. He is a fighter. And the mother uh, is uh, behind them, supporting them. And the fences are the fences, but it seems that they can make the breakthrough. And the whole thing is close to a tragedy, or at least to drama. Um, the reason that I showed uh, this picture to you uh, was not that I uh, cannot uh, uh, use the time for a trip. Rather, it is that I try to uh, uh, take uh, you closer to the to the address of my the title of my of my uh, present uh, keynote, which uh, holds the title as you see, the role of learning in political change. And the pictures which I showed right now to you was. Uh, about the political change. When I, when you read this title and think of, started to think of what kind of political change can be uh, connected to the learning, then the author of this presentation suggests to you that the present polit political change, the present political change is the political change which is now connected uh, to, to learning. How can it be? Learning seems to us a very calm, very quiet thing with a book in our hand or with uh, some uh, pencils or with a situation where nobody disturbed me so I can learn. How can uh, be that the author of the presentation talks about learning during the political change, within the political change, as a factor of political change. Well, this was uh, the uh, this was the title I suggested, and we uh, accepted a year ago. At that time, we didn't go. Well, we had, we had ideas about the coming migration, but we didn't know that. But here, that's an easy uh, situation for me. Political change is now here. 
that we can easily talk to about the uh, role of learning. I'd like to, uh, with this, uh, within this time frame, I'd like to present you, uh, or highlight you, two points. The one is the historic <coughs> point. How the individual learning, which I tried to describe right now, to you, one person uh, with, a, with, a, with a book in a quiet situation, how uh, did individual learning develop to community learning? What was the what was the way of thinking and changing attitudes? This is one uh, chapter or one uh, point or one uh, title subtitle of this presentation. The other one is how the learning community contributes to political change. How the learning community is the element or the indicator and also the actor of the political change. And here's some. Uh, Here's some experiences with findings where I from. The first part is more theoretical, the other one is more experienced. This is not a scientific presentation, as you realize. This is uh, bites for bites of food for thinking. And my punch is that uh, a keynote presentation uh, can be or probably has the role of giving you food for further thinking. And this is the reason that I created or recreated, I would say, by the way, in brackets several times. Uh, the last one was this morning. Um, how to uh, keep you, uh, your interest with the political change and to the, follow the th theoretical curve which these uh, attitudes, learning, different learnings, uh, uh, carry the uh, 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 this is uh, quite, no, this is our common uh, knowledge. Uh, the expansion of school server, uh, I wouldn't say started, but uh, realized or formulated or uh, put into the uh, uh, discussion or scientific arena, uh, formulated as a, as a, as a theme uh, in the early 1970s. Actually, when I started as, as, a, as a researcher, uh, was in the mid 70s. Uh, I, I came across with an American uh, Polish uh, professor who at that time visited the Hungary and the Academy of, uh, of Science, and, and I, I learned a lot uh, about his uh, uh, introduction because I did well, uh, the statistics were clear, but I didn't put it together. Uh, Martin Throw at that time did for there is a paper uh, published by the UNESCO, which is more a position paper or a working paper, and then uh, some years later we put a um, textbook, and this uh, analysis comes from the textbook. And everybody, well, here is, uh, here is the curve. We, only, we, we all need this, uh, new, new this uh, S curve. Uh, we start with a long, uh, Wrong, stagnating the, the part, and then a, a sudden or rapid uh, inflation part, and later, and this is until 2000, later will come another one, which is again a, a, a stagnating uh, point. We know this uh, curve, and we also, uh, during the 70s and the 80s, we were thinking and talking many times about the expansion of education. By the way, the 70s came after the 60s. And the 60s were the decade here in, 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 in Europe of uh, student unrest, in America, the Vietnam War, and in the, uh, this part of Europe, uh, among others, uh, the best known uh, Spring of Prague. So the uh, uh, 1960s seemed to be very busy, I would say. 1970s were the great expectations, where together with the Concord uh, 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 flying two hours from uh, Europe to the United States, uh, by the way, it never exists anymore, and also creating the channel, uh, uh, the tunnel, which is uh, working even today, and many, many good ideas, 
including the expansion of schooling, with the question that what would happen after 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 this uh, curve when the curve would reach uh, the peak, what would happen? Many of us, well, many experts, I would say, thought that there would be a fourth grade. Uh, adult education it could be considered as the fourth grade of this uh, uh, first, second, and tertiary grades, I mean, or, 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 or uh, uh, sectors of education. Uh, and uh, we were waiting for uh, the fantastic uh, 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 episode of our life when uh, more than nearly uh, 100,000 or more than 80% of the, of the students uh, would attend higher education or tertiary education. And we didn't realize at that time, only later, that an unexpected change happened, which was the other side of the coin, uh, the expansion of learning, not schooling, because these two things are not the same. And many of us think that these two, two things are the same, and they are not. Schooling is uh, happening to us. Education is happens to, uh, to someone who is educated. And uh, learning is not uh, something which comes uh, uh, from above, but from the bottom. Learning is, if I do not want to learn, I am not learning. Uh, they can force me uh, to be a learner, but I will not learn that. So an unexpected change was the, was the uh, uh, expansion of learning, a different attitude a different vision uh, for the world, uh, which that the schooling, not only the schooling was expanded, but also a new attitude, which was the expansion of learning. Uh, the Arbingers, uh, in the, uh, the early 70s, there were three people, people who already discussed about this, who already produced books. By the way, I, I, I uh, saw uh, yesterday afternoon I saw uh, Freire's, Freire's book even today uh, it is uh, 30, 40, nearly 45 years and uh, uh, Freire is still lively in his books with the idea. at that time we didn't go anybody not to mention the Eastern Europeans who were, who were blocked from these ideas uh, I don't want to over right now. But Freire told the, about the pedagogy of the operas. In other words, this was not the school, but other types of schoolish teaching uh, and learning activities which helped the operas, at least according to Freire, uh, to be uh, liberal. And uh, the partner, I mean, in, uh, in, in Mainz, uh, uh, in the line of philosophy, Ivan Ilyich, who is, by the way, a Central European in origin, but Ivan Ilyich was, uh, in 1971, about the de-schooling of society, which uh, were quite, much stricter than uh, Freire, telling that not school would, uh, liber uh, would give uh, liberty to the oppressed. Because a school is, uh, is put from uh, above to the oppressed and contribute to the oppression, not uh, being liberal. Which at that, well, instead, Freire is told that there are several different, I would even say, alternative ways of learning and teaching, which at that time were fantastic and quite unusual, not today anymore. Uh, we can turn back uh, again, but, uh, uh, but this autonomous learning, which, uh, as he told at that time, he wrote at that time, might even occur in the, in the uh, 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 different railway stations and wherever, happening today. I mean, <laughs> we can, we can uh, uh, while we are waiting for, for our railway or for our flight, we can 
inform ourselves and we can read the journals and whatever on our own device. So it, it happened. Uh, the officials who put the stamp officially that yes, these are not only visions, these are close to the realities. Uh, Edgar Ford and his uh, team uh, with a famous, famous uh, uh, report uh, under the uh, title of Learning to Be uh, Challenge Itself, I mean, uh, uh, linguistically speaking, Hungarians could never ever uh, translate it according to the original meaning, because the original meaning is really, really deep. Probably comes from the Indian philosophy. I'm not quite sure about this. This is just a hypothesis. But uh, if I, if we read it again, learning to be is something which is very forceful. Talking about four new dimensions of learning, as we see here. Uh, well, learning society was the most, uh, most uh, awaiting, awaiting uh, uh, idea. Uh, to do the whole society uh, the place of, of education. Uh, various people uh, uh, felt that it, it would be an uh, impossible thing and a threatening thing. But what he had in, his team had in mind was different. And we will see what this really was. The treasure within the laws, the famous people, uh, moves on the same line. Uh, adopts the same philosophical thinking or approach to education, not to education, but to learning, which, uh, uh, which uh, goes and uh, keeps us in the deepness of our mind and of our soul. So education and uh, the fourth pillar of education, learning to be, is, the, is the, the essence of the treasure, which is within. Again, uh, we have only uh, a bad translation, uh, translation for that. So these are, uh, this is the official step of the, for the uh, idea that learning uh, 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 expanded our attitude uh, toward learning shifted differently during this uh, 20 years between, or 20 more years between uh, four and, uh, and uh, the loss. Uh, see uh, an experiment of uh, trying to measure, to evaluate whether the, uh, the, these new pillars of the loss of, of learning, so not only school learning, but le workplace learning and uh, leisure time le learning and private enriched learning would be somehow evaluated. We know that school learning is evaluated by the famous PISA uh, uh, project program. But how can uh, we uh, evaluate uh, this type of learning? Can we at all evaluate this type of learning? Here is the Canadian, uh, Canadian uh, experience, uh, learning to know, learning to do, uh, learning to uh, live together, learning to be, and here are those uh, dimensions and then the indicators which uh, uh, the statistics of which uh, could be collected and probably you can find the learning profile of a society. Uh, there, is a, there is a European version of this, and also a German version of this, and uh, to the uh, later time, uh, in, Hungarian, uh, in Hungary, to use the Hungarian version of that. I wouldn't believe at all, I mean not at all, but 100% of this evaluation, but I think that the, the, the tryout uh, the attitude that we, we really want to go uh, for these uh, different pillars or dimensions of learning, we really take it as granted, is very important for that. Early theories, because uh, learning, well, we, we know everything 
uh, nearly 100 years ago, uh, including the social learning theory, Bandura, uh, uh, who published it, and many followers, and also the great socialization theory, which in heart is learning. I mean, how to learn the new roles, uh, to be a member of a society, while, while you are a member of a group and a society, you will be developed as, your, your, as, as an individual. <laughs> very uh, briefly uh, uh, telling the idea. And uh, as Janice uh, told uh, in his, uh, in his uh, uh, big manual, uh, learning uh, uh, became, uh, during the last 50 years, a powerful, powerful social science uh, concept. Uh, so powerful that sometimes social, sociologists and other social uh, researchers may not realize, or even if they realize, they not uh, theorize too, too much about it. So in other words, we, we knew about this. Uh, the, the new thing was the sudden expansion of learning, that it suddenly popped up and uh, uh, gave us the new uh, vision about teaching and learning in education. Um, community learning is the form that we, we, during the last 10 years we were talking uh, many times about. Again, uh, uh, an approach to learning which uh, is not quite new. After the uh, great uh, uh, regression during the 1930s in the United States, uh, a progressive, new progressive line of education uh, began to start to talk about learning not within the school, but in the school and out, outside of the school, or outside of the school, within the community, the local society of which is uh, partly the school. This was the uh, uh, vision of the progressive educators. Right, uh, quite different from the idea of PISA that lets uh, uh, measure and uh, weight uh, different uh, 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 findings uh, and teacher and the students uh, 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 realities and reasons. Um, recently, I'm sorry, recently uh, Wenger talked about, oh, I'm sorry. Recently, Wenger talked about the community of practitioners, telling, well, it was not uh, per se about learning, but the practitioners who were living in one community, if they work and, uh, and cooperate, and work together, and they intensi intensively uh, develop their work, this is, uh, uh, Wenger is not a researcher, rather he, he is an organization, of de organization developer. And uh, this is uh, the scope of his organizational uh, 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 development and practices. On, on this, uh, following this idea, we can talk about the community of learners, a community where the learning processes are speeded up, where the learners of each, uh, each individual, uh, because they are learning in the community, could uh, somehow make the others faster and help the, their learning together. So the community of learners seems to be the, at least uh, right now, the end station of this great uh, 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 travel from the individual schoolish learning to the learning communities and community learners. Uh, this is uh, this slide uh, help uh, to understand what I meant or what the, these uh, theoreticians uh, meant about community learning. And uh, now comes uh, the model, or a possible model, I would say, of how uh, the community learning is going on. I'm sorry. 
how the community learning is going on. In other words, how uh, do learning within the community happen? And uh, this is a model which uh, we created during a, a fairly long uh, research project on uh, learning communities and learning regions. But when I uh, prepared myself for this uh, uh, keynote, uh, I found a much closer, much better exp uh, 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 exp explanation and, and uh, had a much better experience, which is much closer to us. Think uh, this conference, this ECR conference in Budapest, as a community. And if you uh, adopt this vision and look around, uh, recently I was in the buffet of this building, and I saw, I don't know how many uh, tables, probably they were six. And around the table, small groups, and they, they were discussed. Well, they were discussed different things. Uh, yesterday evening, I met at, uh, uh, in, in the reception, or in the, uh, in the, uh, in the wheel, or the bar line. I met a lady who uh, were under his name, the University of Oxford, and I knew uh, her uh, long time ago, uh, for a long time. And asked that uh, you were in uh, in uh, Warwick University, not in Oxford. And he said, yes, but the Warwick University shut down the department. And I asked why, and she explained to me, pa, pa, pa. and there were a small circle listening to it and raising questions. And uh, this is just a small model how we, within the 2,000 uh, uh, people around us, uh, changed information, and I learned a lot. And uh, uh, recently, or well, later, uh, she gave his business card, and the business card contained her name and the QR code. And I asked, what is this? And uh, she told us, this is the QR code, and this will keep your mobile photograph. And I learned this, and well, I learned a lot during this uh, uh, three days. And probably you do. I mean, all of us are learning without realizing that we are doing so. Why is it important? Because this happens within one space and in one time. This is a, this is a so to say, crowded, if not overcrowded place, where the information changes are very active and where the intensity of this new knowledge they're coming up and down, and the density of the people and the networks are very uh, strong. Now this is learning community. And think what happens when the learning community uh, are challenged. Uh, whether you know or not, there was uh, two challenges up until now of this learning community, of this uh, um, uh, uh, conference, as a learning community. The so one was, uh, well, this, this was just a hunch, just uh, uh, something in the air, a student demonstration uh, because of the restructuring of this university. And the other one uh, was, with, with, with which I, I started, uh, the immigration, immigration the problem about which uh, uh, Theo Wittler and the others uh, were always talking again and again that we are not in the neutral place, we are in the society, in the societies, things are happening. Uh, what happened with this uh, question, what was, the, what was the challenge was that there were, still are, a group of interested people who would like to know much more about the migration uh, uh, situation in Hungary and in Budapest. But there is another group uh, of people who would like to keep the program uh, for which the first group would like to reorganize a panel. And uh, well, this is still behind the, behind the uh, facade, I would say, but if uh, you think of what's happening, 
than you may see this. We are the community, we need the challenge, uh, we need new knowledge. We would like to know why the students are demonstrating, we would like to know why this migration uh, process uh, hit the railway station and what happened to these people and so far and so forth. And uh, uh, there is a problem solving, uh, gathering up to date info for inf information and it really happened during this uh, uh, process, during these three days. In other words, here we experienced with our own uh, experiences, with our own faces, with our own knowledge, what is community learning. The only thing is that we don't we didn't think about that, but it happens. Now, if, if uh, we can accept this model of community learning, then we can see with a different eye of what happened to this migration uh, flow and uh, how uh, the Hungarians as the community uh, uh, met this challenge. The first step, here are the steps. Uh, an important uh, piece, uh, piece of this, uh, or oh, I'm sorry, an uh, important piece of this is a debate which started for defining the problem. And uh, this is sometimes missed, but it is an important thing, even if it is not open. Um, in Hungary, during this immigration flow, there were clearly three groups, probably everywhere. The one group uh, uh, thought and still think that immigration is a security uh, danger. Uh, danger for uh, the culture, uh, the threat for the security, and whatever. And this is a large group. Uh, you, it might be that in one society it is smaller, in other society it's larger, but it's a forceful group. There are always, here in Hungary also, another group which <coughs> thought that uh, immigration is also or mainly a humanitarian tragedy, as we saw it in the pictures. Therefore, uh, the first thing we have to do, the objective of, uh, of our, our, the target of our policy should be helping and not uh, protecting ourselves. And there is a third group, and it seems that it is close to solve the problem, which is the small business man who offer uh, uh, for a few uh, the men and women and family, one taxi cab, another, uh, uh, another track, uh, keeping uh, the hand for money, and uh, creating troubles sometimes. As we know, 70 uh, dead is not a, it's not a childish uh, thing. But it seems that if the the former society, the official society, or the NGOs are not uh, uh, helping the, the refugees or migrants to reach the other border, somebody should uh, do it for business, on the market. It's a marketization of the immigration process, I would say. This is the first, uh, this picture uh, suggests the first uh, uh, group's uh, standpoint. That is a threat, so please, has to be there. Uh, do not use your, your uh, equipment, but be there and keep on. There is the other one. Small businessman is the track during the night. Uh, it's free, I mean, there is no taxation, no uh, control on the highway, why not? And they have money. We don't know the origin of this money, but they pay, so we do. And this is the humanitarian uh, action that we, we, try to, we try to help, and they are a small, uh, um, unpoverished uh, uh, people. Let's help on them. Um, we have some lessons close to the end. This is the first one. I think that, uh, that we, uh, this is not uh, the Budapest problem. That's not the Hungarian model. 
that's not the easy art problem. Of course not. This is a European problem. Some would even say that this is a world problem. Uh, how people are how people are moving uh, suddenly with the modern equipment in hands and with, uh, with the guns in their back and uh, ask uh, for uh, for uh, uh, new places and uh, security for their life and for their family. So probably this is the main lesson that we have to learn right now. And if we do not learn, if we do not realize that we have to learn, that it, that it, that it is not happening. That is lesson one. And uh, let me show uh, the, probably the young uh, faces of Europe. Europe is in a demographic depression. Everybody knows that. Some demographic uh, forecast uh, talks about 150 million of uh, uh, new uh, Europeans if for, for, the, for the stabilizing of our social security and health care system. There are somebody who already has. Uh, one of uh, my, my colleagues uh, uh, showed me this uh, this uh, warning yes, I'm not thank you very much. Uh, they are the Danish who think that uh, learning is in the center of this safety problem, of this immigration problem, and try to do what we can do. So learning seems to be not an individual, not a schoolish, not a childish thing. It seems to be in the heart of our political change, present political change. Second lesson two learn. We are now in the eastern part of Central Europe or the western part of East Europe. Uh, this is a long discussion among us, but anyhow, we are, uh, we are the uh, former, so to say, socialist countries of the former countries under the Soviet uh, rule. Uh, we know what it means to be uh, under the rule. We also know what it means dropping up uh, our borders. This is the main reason that we are, we are alerted why these uh, fences were, were uh, taken on the, board, on the border. So can, can this experience contribute to our new attitudes? Well, probably these uh, experiences are uh, old enough and it's uh, nothing to do with this new immigration. Probably this is a warning to us anyhow, and since this ECR conference is here in Central Europe, then uh, you probably may know that uh, the senior generation, to which I uh, also uh, uh, belong to, uh, has quite uh, great experiences of what happened. This is one piece of the experience. This happened in uh, 1988 when the Austrian-Hungarian electric border was for a few uh, hours open by the Hungarians and uh, um, uh, East Germans realized that there was a slot in the border, ran for the freedom. Running, running, they shouted. And uh, this is a heartbreaking history. It's a heartbreaking moment of our experience. So, uh, thank you for listening to me. Please uh, have this food uh, for thinking when you are uh, uh, going back to your learning circles, to your networks, and please uh, keep an eye open of, of the place which already experienced this migration, which were probably the first signal of a greater migration, the present migration, which is again the first signal of the future of Europe. Thank you for your attention.
I was not. I don't uh, think that you will have your pen, pencils and papers. So I put it on the research field, which is uh, which is usually uh, suggested by Ila. Here you can find this presentation. Thank you very much, Professor Kozma, for your today's keynote. Um, so I think that we have still some minutes for questioning and for comments. Lewis Hughes from the Lincoln in Australia. I found that inspiring. And you, I found your present no. I can't learn the bread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this yes. <laughs> Lewis Hughes from Deakin in Australia. <coughs> I found your presentation inspiring and giving a great deal of meaning to this conference. And for me personally, meaning in my professional researching activity. So I thank you from that. Thank you. Andrew from the University of Hamburg. We have a memorandum of understanding with the, uh, with the UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning in Hamburg and I wondered whether you have been in contact with them or begun to them because a lot of the publications you quote are kind of the UNESCO lineup and I, I like to hear it again from uh, Paolo Ferrer up to uh, Jean Leyden, Etienne Wenger and I wondered why you did not mention uh, the Jean, Jean Leib approach to um, communities of practice I wonder whether you know about a recent um, discussion that is going beyond communities of learning because they critic there is criticism on Etienne Wenger's approach which is easily to, to be exploited for, um, for the aims of businesses, for the aims of enterprises without keeping in mind the origin of the theory of communities of practice which was situated learning which was much more oriented towards citizenship and uh, the ability, for example, to um, to react towards political changes, as you um, as you put into the, the heart of the presentation. And the second second question, uh, which is more more important to me, is in, in the actual situation. Do you think that um, learning at the community is the only answer, because according to me, this is a bit. Well, I would I would ask for a bit more political activity, and I would um, ask more from the, the political organizations and, and, and their members, which are obviously the um, the citizens, um, to give a clearer vision on how to react towards globalization, because it is not a European problem; it's a, it's a global problem, and Europe. Is, um, was part of making this <coughs> problem and other part of it. Yeah, thank you for, for the questions uh, uh, for the for the for the ideas laid up. As far as uh, Wenger is concerned, uh, I try to follow this, but uh, uh, my pre presentation has to be in a clear line. So I didn't want to, uh, <coughs> I didn't uh, have enough time to show all the. Uh, possible discourse and whatever, but this is not an important point. An important point, and the most important point, excuse me, is your second uh, point, which is, is learning, can, can learning be presented as the only solution? Of course not. Of course not. Um, if you would uh, stay here, and you would uh, see the faces, uh, you wouldn't uh, start uh, thinking of one and three or fourth or the tenth alternative of how to uh, create, reflect or present the dynamism of, of, of our society. That's, that's clear, that's clear. And you are quite right. 
learning as it is presented here uh, <coughs> is not dynamic enough. Uh, learning is still suggests that something uh, has to go through and uh, I, I contribute to this um, natural law with my learning. So there is something which is going on. This is the suggestion I know, I feel. So the dynamics of the, of the society, the political change of the society is caused of not these nicely learning people being together in nice places, <coughs> I call them uh, city, uh, learning city, this was the most, uh, the, the, the main reason that when I structured this uh, elaborate scheme, I pointed out uh, the problem solving learning. Learning as problem solving. Because I felt that this interpretation of learning Learning, which is the, uh, which is uh, how the how a, a collective of people, be the be the uh, small town, a large town, a region, whatever, uh, uh, met meet the challenge uh, and solve the trouble, and by meeting the challenge, formulating the the objectives and uh, struggling for leading. Uh, this uh, this problem solving and creating new knowledges or or consumptive new knowledges are dynamic enough. Not only you feel that it is still uh, dynamic enough. You, you might be you might be right, and I will start thinking of how can I uh, make it more dynamic than today. But uh, well, relation is dynamic enough. I think that's fantastic. So we are going to just include one more question. How are you? Helen Hinehan from Trinity College in Dublin. And I'd really like to thank you for giving us a very positive message on how we can apply our learning. We are all educationists and academics. And um, from the media coverage, we get nothing but negative coverage on this challenge that is facing us all, the migration. And here you have shown us a way of taking that challenge and looking upon it as an opportunity for our own learning, not just for learning within schools, but problem solving and finding a way forward that can actually develop both us as people, both us as nations, and meet the needs of the migrants. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you for all. Thank you for all of listening to me and giving me a great chance of yeah, learning. Thank you. I love that.